Okay, so that's now been baking for about 10 minutes at 200 degrees. So we can say that the water layer has been dissolved. Now the next step will be the spin coating. And uh, before you take the sample off the hot plate and get ready to spin coat, you wanna make sure that the settings for the spin coater are the ones that you want. Um, so this is the spin coater. Um, it's quite a simple instrument. We've got um, essentially, this is a, a splash guard for, for the liquid. Um, uh, all it is is essentially a chuck which spins. There's a motor underneath which will uh, spin this chuck at, at the speed that we, that we want. Um, you see this rubber ring, this makes a seal with the sample. So the sample is quite big, for example a silicon wafer or a glass wafer. You can put it directly on top of this chuck and this rubber ring will make contact with the sample and it will uh, seal it in place. And the way uh, that the sample is attached to the chuck itself is uh, uh, through this hole here, which is connected to a vacuum pump which we have uh, below the bench. So when we turn on the vacuum pump, uh, through this hole here, the vacuum will suck the sample in and the sample will be pressed against this rubber seal and uh, it will hold the sample in place. And then while the sample is in place, we can put the liquid um, um, photoresist on and we can spin it and get the thickness that we, that we want. Uh, because the, we're using a glass slide now, we can't go directly onto this rubber seal because it's too big, so we have to use an adapter uh, like this one. So before uh, putting it on, I'm going to give it a quick uh, wipe with a clean wipe. It's good practice to do this uh, every time you, you do it. Mostly to keep it clean and also to make sure that the, um, the rubber seal, uh, the gasket is, um, is clean so it makes good contact with the surface of the sample because if there is a leak in the vacuum, the sample will not be held in place correctly. So I'm going to give this a quick wipe uh, with a bit of acetone or isopropanol. Just throughout on all sides. And now we're ready to put on uh, the chuck. And then in addition to that, because there will be uh, inevitably some excess um, photoresist liquid that will fly off the sample while it's spinning, we have this splash guard. Um, and because the SUA tends to get quite messy, it's a very sticky and, and viscous liquid, um, I'm going to line up the, the bottom of the spin coater with uh, a piece of clean room wipe. So I'm going to pick up a new fresh clean room wipe. And I'm going to just fold it in four, like so. I'm going to cut out a hole in the middle. So we now end up with a, a hole like that, that we can put around the chuck. And uh, we can use it to pick up the spills that will drip down the edge of the splash guard, okay? The splash guard is, is a sacrificial thing, so at some point it will be disposed of once it gets too, uh, too full of SU8 and, and gets overall too sticky. So the next step is to uh, set the settings of the spin coater. So here the settings will depend on the type of process that you're running. So on the type of uh, photoresist that you're using. For the experiment today we'll be using the SU8 2010, uh, which nominally is designed for thicknesses between 7, about 7 and 20 micrometers. And we'll spin it at 1500 uh, RPM, which will give us a final thickness of about 15 micrometers. Um, Depending on the type of photoresist that you choose, you will get different thicknesses. So uh, consult the data sheet uh, or, or the protocol of the experiment to see what spin speed you need to use to get a certain thickness. You can adjust within a certain range the thickness of the photoresist, but if you have to change the thickness by a significant amount, you might have to buy a different photoresist to be able to do that. Um, so I've turned on the, the spinner and you can have a look at the display. This is the display when it's uh, first turned on. And what I want to do now is to scroll through the programs and the program that I will use today for this um, um, demonstration is program number 13. So once I select program number 13, I can hit, hit the edit mode button and this will allow me to change any values um, or to just check the values to see that I have what I want. Um, so you see that the spinning uh, happens in two steps. We, are, uh, we have step one out of two. And this comes straight from the data sheet for uh, the photoresist. So there is, it's recommended in the data sheet that you first do a spinning step at 500 RPM with an acceleration of 100 RPM per second. And this first spinning step is to evenly distribute the SU8 over the surface of the sample. And the spinning time for this is only about 10 seconds. So we don't need a very uh, long spinning time for that. This is 
particularly convenient if you're using a, a round, a circular sample, for example a silicon wafer, and you put a big dollop of SU8 in the middle, and this first spinning step will essentially spread the SU8 all over the surface. In this case, we will have to be a little bit more careful with that, uh, as you see later on. So just to check that uh, after this first step, I have the right settings, I can click this forward button, and this will bring me to step number two out of two. We have a spinning time of 30 seconds this time, and our RPM setting of 1,500 RPM, and an acceleration of 300 RPM per second. Uh, and this all comes pretty much straight from the data sheet. So uh, this speed of uh, 1,500, this is something that I set to get the thickness that I want. Uh, but if you want to uh, tweak the, t uh, the thickness, you will need to change this number. And always make sure that if you go to high spinning speed, because the acceleration has a finite value, you might have to have increase the spinning time to allow enough time for the spin coater to accelerate uh, to the RPM setting that you want. Throughout this whole thing, you see that this we have this vacuum option, and we always want to keep that option as required um, for both the first step and the second step. Okay, so this now has uh, the settings that I want, so I'm happy with that. So I can switch now to the run mode, and this will um, make the spin coater ready uh, for spinning. Okay, so um, the next step will be to quickly um, get the uh, sample off the hot plate and leave it to cool down. So we want it to cool down for about 90 seconds. This will get the sample from 200 degrees to approximately room temperature. And then we'll be able to put it in the spin coater. The reason we want it to cool down is first of all, not to damage the rubber gasket with a very hot uh, sample. Um, and second, we also don't want to uh, put uh, photoresist directly onto a hot sample because this will uh, possibly change the, uh, the properties of the photoresist, for example, the viscosity, and also it's a, it's a material that is sensitive to temperature. So I'm going to take this sample off the hot plate and leave it to cool down on a piece of paper and on a clean room wipe for uh, 90 seconds, okay? I'm just going to leave it here. Okay, so the glass side has now been cooling down for 90 seconds. I'm going to pick it up and put it onto the spin coater. So you want to make sure that the sample is roughly centered, uh, as well as you can get it centered in both directions, both in the X and Y direction. So I'm gonna just gently nudge it like that. So the sample is now uh, in place. However, it's not held in place by the vacuum yet. So uh, to do that, I first need to turn on the vacuum pump. So I'm gonna turn on the vacuum pump right now. That only turns on the vacuum pump, it doesn't activate the vacuum on the chuck. To activate it on the spinner, you have to press the vacuum button on here. So as I press this, you'll see that this number has changed from 0 to 25, or some other uh, number that's close to 20. And this, now you can feel that the sample is firmly attached to the surface. Now, because we're doing all this in air, uh, we're not in a clean room right now, so I'm going to give it a quick blow, just to get rid of any dust that landed on the surface of the sample while I was running uh, the process. So I'm gonna take out the photoresist, I'm gonna take a good amount, maybe two or three milliliters, with a pipette, like so. And I'm gonna start distributing the photoresist with my pipette throughout the whole sample. I might get some bubbles depending on how I picked it up. You don't want to worry about the bubbles just yet. And that's something we're gonna deal with at the very end of the spreading process. So you wanna get it relatively evenly spread throughout the whole surface. Don't worry about the edges just yet. We're gonna deal with those also at the end. While you're doing this, just be, keep an eye on the level of the SU8 in the pipette. You don't wanna squirt it all out because if you do, you're gonna get a lot of bubbles in the moment that you do it. Okay, so now we've got uh, a fair amount of SU8 on the surface, so what I want to do next is just go close to the edges, try to avoid cutting past the edges. So I'm not really pushing any more SU8 out of the pipette, but I'm just using the pipette to spread around the SU8 that is already there. Like so. And now, if you have any bubbles, and I see I, can, I have a few here, 
all you can do is you can either use the pipette to aspirate the bubbles and pick them up or you can use it to prod the bubbles towards the edge because if you get bubbles in the, at the edge it's not really an issue so um, the edges in general are not a, a delicate part of the sample so we don't really want to care too much about the edges it's important that the central part which is going to hold the device is correctly um, um, coated with SUA so I'm going to throw this pipette away and now we're ready for the spinning so I'm going to close it and hit the start button and this will now start counting down we'll start spinning up the sample okay so now it's reached the step number two I'm going to close the photoresist in here so once the spinning is done I will pick it up uh, I will deactivate the vacuum pick up the sample and the next step is the so-called soft bake step and it's a bake at, uh, which we're going to do for this sample for one minute at 65 degrees plus four minutes at 95 degrees. This all comes pretty much from the data sheet for the SUA. Okay, so the spinning is now done. So I can lift up the lid. I can turn off the vacuum. I can also turn off the vacuum pump so it's a bit less noisy. And now I can pick it up and put it straight onto the hot plate at 65 degrees C. So I will now start the timer for one minute and it will sit at 65 degrees for one minute and when it's uh, uh, when that one minute is up I will turn up the uh, the temperature of the hot plate to 95 degrees and once the sample reaches 95 degrees I will leave it there for an additional four minutes. Um, so you will see that in the data sheets this is really important for the thicker resist so uh, going from maybe 30 micrometers upwards uh, so for the thinner resist you might also get away with a single step at 95 degrees so if you're tight on time you can you can just do that um, the data sheets for this particular photoresist this SU8 2010 uh, it's not really required to do a two-step process and the only reason why for thicker films uh, this is recommended is to uh, reduce uh, strain on the film itself as it dries which can cause cracks so you want to do it uh, a little bit more uh, you want to heat up the sample a bit more gradually okay so I'm gonna leave this here uh, and this is now uh, gone past one minute so uh, we're gonna skip that in the video we'll just increase the temperature to 95 like so, and I'm gonna leave it here now uh, to get to 95. Um, and then when it gets to 95, I'm gonna start a new timer for four minutes, and that's gonna be the end of the soft bake step.